And welcome inside the backstage pass. It is hump day Wednesday. Two more work days until the weekend, which is always a fun time too, to plan for yourself instead of planning for somebody else, I guess you'd say, is the old saying when it comes to work. Always fun down here on the backstage pass uh, powered by the uh, Sports Guys podcast.com. And of course, uh, Kirsty Krause, she's having a little fun down at Key West. I told her today I'd love to swap places with her. Uh, down there at that Songwriters Festival down there, too. She'll be back with us hopefully next week here on the show as we're presented by our friends at uh, Bangtail Whiskey. Check them out, bangtail.com, Gentle Ben Spirits, gentleben.com for the vodka, the gin, and the bourbon. And, of course, uh, Honky Tonk Texas, May 19th. Randall King will be playing live there. He mentioned that on the show the other day, and we're excited to be a part of that, too. And I'm excited to have back one of my best friends in the industry, uh, someone I've been following for a long time, and she's been on quite the ride here in 2023. Uh, Morgan Miles, back to the program. How's it going? <laughs> it's going great. How are you guys? I'm I'm good. Kirsty wanted me to tell you hello and everybody from the team here. So, uh, you know, it's it's uh, <laughs> following the ride. Last time I saw you was at Mucky Ducks in Houston. I was just and- thinking about that. I'm like, man, I need to get back to Mucky Ducks. That was a fun, <laughs> even during a pandemic, it was like a really good vibe. And yeah turnout it's a cool spot we had a drink and we had some food and we enjoyed the the concert too well let me let me start here because i want to talk about this ride and this ride being uh nbc's the voice i mean obviously we know this is blake's last season but man this was a huge thing for you a huge pedestal to get on and you know everybody that knows your story that knows your past like i do and maybe some people don't tuning in for the first time i just want to know about your experience and how much this program really meant to you and for your career you know, I wouldn't have gone on a show like this unless I just felt that it was a good marketing platform. As an artist, you can't, especially as an independent artist, mm-hmm. afford after a pandemic, you know, 8 million people viewing in every Monday and Tuesday. Um, I always was kind of against these shows just because of the fact that you're not singing your originals, if mm-hmm. I'm honest because I, I feel like that's how you really get to tell your story but I, I felt very confident with um, knowing that I could make the songs my own I know I wanted to have a coach that was a female Camila was the first time coach so I knew all eyes were going to be on Camila and she has such a huge global following um, and but we were just such, I could tell from her energy that we were very, very similar as humans, as females, we fight for causes, we support mm-hmm. one another. And um, I think the show was super good to me. They had me premiere the show. Um, they let me sing Hallelujah, which is very rare, apparently. I found mm-hmm. out later. Um, and I just felt really um, surrounded by, like, as far as the voice crew, they just all really respected me as an artist. And they, they said I knew who I was so well. And it, I never thought I would have that much creative control. But everybody mm-hmm. from the band to the styling, they, they would listen to me, to the production notes. It was so much fun. I mean, I I loved having that high of a caliber to work with. I was ready for it for from years and years and years of killing myself on the road. Being able to sit there and go, that your your song is Tennessee whiskey. I was like, well, Paul, I want to take it Memphis Soul, and I want a whole horn section this week. He's like, okay, <laughs> no problem. You know, like moments like that was huge for me, and and getting to do like I knew I wanted to save always remember us this way to the point that we could have that grand piano on the stage, mm-hmm. and that dress was mine. So I go to styling right after I get through elimination that like, so, cause I knew Wednesday they're going in and they're talking about it, the whole thing. So I was like, I want them to know my idea first. <laughs> and so I, uh, I said, can you put all the money and budget for my wardrobe this week in just a train, like make a train, the material to fill the stage. And they were just pumped. Like the, mm-hmm. the wardrobe, they're like, yes, we could do that. I was like, this is a dream come true. So mom, mom shipped that heavy heavy pearl dress that i had at my house that i never knew what to wear it for and it just came together (laughs) beautifully it came together so pretty um Mm -hmm. so yeah i had a blast because i got to do things that i've always wanted to do on a creative level but also reach so many more people and that's 
ultimately what this business is, you just want to be heard. You want your voice out there. And mm -hmm. I think um, this was a good way for me to kind of cut through some of the politics and the mud of social media mm -hmm. and a lot of the the hell that we went through from the pandemic and some other situations for me. So yeah, it was a great thing. I, I can't, I can't really complain. I didn't want to win because of that contract. So the, the record contract, mm -hmm. I didn't want to win. So um, I got everything out of it that I wanted. You know, one of the things I love so much about that one compared to other shows out there, and I'm not going to knock any show, any show for anybody that they step on is good. But one of the things I love that you got on there too was really cool. Great advice, great coaching. And you mentioned some of the top names in the industry who are there. It feels like for the artists who may not otherwise have a chance to get their stuff out there. These were coaches that you mentioned about millions of followers, uh, great songwriters, uh, have worked with some great producers. I mean, you look at Chance the Rapper and some of the other ones that are on there now, Niall Horan. And that one-on-one -on -one coaching that you get, the insight you get on the industry, that had to be very valuable too. Yeah, I felt like such a team with Camila because mm -hmm. we really would go back and forth constantly um, and really, really dissect it, the songs. The song choice was always the hardest each week for me, being that I'm a very versatile artist and I, I always wanted to match my storyline considering I had so much of a story to tell. I always mm -hmm. wanted to match like my story with the song choice and that's the storyteller in me. Um, of course, the story producers were like, hey, you don't have to like completely <laughs> align. <laughs> and then Camila, though, was very just like we would go back and forth. And, and I mean, for for hours and days over music, even coming back for the lives, you know, mm -hmm. and and how to align things up like and we'd really fight for what we we wanted. And um, she was always she always had my back like we really did. We we're just so similar and it was just fun to work with somebody with mutual respect. She mm -hmm. knew I'd had a ton of experience and been through a lot. And I knew that she had been through a lot too. And we just wanted what's best for both. We're super connected to our family. Her mom and her dog were there all the time. And, <laughs> you know, the show didn't really air a lot of all the personal time that I got with Camila over any of the other contestants with their coaches, I got super, super lucky. She's a really, really kind soul and she didn't have to do that. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was a really good scenario for me. Um, and yeah, we still talk. She's listening to my new music right now and gonna help me out in some ways, I hope. And uh, yeah, I again, I, I feel like it was a really good scenario for me. I think mm -hmm. I was ready to be on a show and I went in, into it going i'm gonna do this so that it <laughs> so that after i get off i mean it's always about what do you do after you get off the show True. the whole crew mm -hmm. was like listen we are a marketing platform like that's what we are mm -hmm. and i was like absolutely so it's like you know a lot of people go like should i go on the show or something i'm like just know why you're going on the show and then what you want to do afterwards like mm -hmm. have be ready to do it just don't go do it because you don't know what to do like mm -hmm. go like you know, immerse yourself in the music scene a little bit and get some foundation before you head to a crazy situation like that. Because afterwards, it's go time. The real work begins when you get off a platform like that. No doubt about it. Everybody has, has told me here on the show is is uh, to, to be an artist. I mean, they get you and groom you kind of like a, I look at it as like a minor league baseball player. You're getting all the developmental stuff you can get from single A, double A, triple A. And boy, when that phone rings and you get up to the major leagues, you better be ready because you only get that one shot. You better make it count. Otherwise, you uh, you go back down, no doubt about it. Hey, let's go back to, uh, before I take a, a quick break here, uh, Therapy, because, again, this was one of the albums we've talked about over the last few years that really impressed me. You put your heart, your soul, everything you stand for as a musician, which I love, and you have a, you're have so kind. I mean, just I can't say enough nice things about you as an artist, as a friend of mine. This really poured out to the fans, and I really love this album. And I know even today, fans still request a lot of songs off of there. Talk about some of the highlights and just um, these songs are very highly requested when you play live. Wow. Um, you know, this I had to fight for two years to release this album because I wrote 70 songs in five months to only have my masters get like basically 
I don't know what the word, word it, it was a bad management deal and mm -hmm. I had to fight for these songs. And I wrote these, they're like your baby, they're your children, you know, because I, a lot of those songs are wrapped in my loss of my cousin. I was writing that during his, you know, the end of his life. I lost him to brain cancer at 33 and it was my, my best friend. I'm like literally looking at him right here. And uh, it was, these songs weren't about me. Like these were songs for my family and for, I feel like I was a vessel just to get, you know, this type of music to people that are going through what I've been through, but everybody is going through something. And mm -hmm. I just feel like that's my mission in life is to hopefully allow music to be therapeutic and healing. And so I kept fighting. I didn't fight for like my own ego that I wanted to, oh, my music needs to be heard. No, this this was like, there's songs like I Believe and Sanctuary and Therapy that I just wanted people to hear because we were going through a pandemic. Yeah, granted, I released it January 2020. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, now this album called Therapy is really appropriate. Um, but it, it had so much strength in it and I was really proud about it. and. I really wanted the whole team surrounding it to get it out there as well. And so it's, it's fun to see people that are just finding out about me hearing this album and being blown away. Cause it's like, you know, that's what you dream of. You want people to go, Hey, play therapy or play sanctuary. <laughs> and you're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what my favorite song is. She knows that from over the years. And we heard that at uh, Monkey Ducks. And of course, I want to come back and talk about the the big tour that's already kind of out there right now, too, as well. It's going to kick off here. Uh, it actually already kicked off. You were down there in Florida. I uh, got some huge dates coming up here for 2023. And uh, definitely uh, MorganMilesLive.com for tickets out there, too, as well, for you guys that want to uh, go see her. I've seen her live. It is an amazing show. And uh, it's, it's definitely worth the ticket price. Go buy tickets. And while you're there, pick up some merch. For God's sakes, we always say support your artist out there. Pick up some merch, no matter who's if providing I it or whatever. It. If, if, you have, if you have it, which I hope she does. Because uh, I'm going to get another T-shirt uh, next time I run into you at a show, no doubt about it. we got to take a time out for the paid sponsors. Of course, Banktail Whiskey. Guys, if you love whiskey, I was in Nashville at CRS this year with Brandon Bing, the owner of that company. He's grown so much. They're now at Live Oak out there. And he is a terrific artist doing a terrific job out there with this whiskey. It is uh, amazingly really good. Uh, I can't tell you unless you just have to try it out there. It's 750 milliliters, uh, easyliquor.com. And, of course, out there, uh, Total Wine and Specs now in Nashville and soon to, to impact the uh, Texas market. Also, our friends over in Honky Tonk, Texas. And, of course, uh, Gentle Bend Spirits. If you like vodka, gin, bourbon, uh, you can have a glass of that, too, as well. They'll tell you more about that in their Persado process here on the uh, Backstage Pass. More to come with Morgan Miles. We're going to talk about... Uh, the new single, Hallelujah, which she referenced already. And, of course, the tour dates for 2023. Hang tight. More to come. It is the Backstage Pass with Morgan Miles. Stay tuned. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. 
It's a warm finish, all right, too. Back here with Morgan Miles on the uh, backstage pass to hear her sing Sanctuary. You'll get that warm, smooth kind of voice and have your favorite glass of uh, Bangtail whiskey as she sings that. So get out to these shows because uh, you guys already started uh, in Florida uh, this past week. You're on a five-day run here. But uh, and for more information, MorganMilesLive.com for tickets and the uh, all over your socials is this. Pretty cool just to see you back out on the road doing what you love to do. You performed in many of the states of the 50 states here uh, continentally wide. Uh, it's just cool to see you hit up at all these venues. I know it's a lot of work, but I know you've got to be excited to be on this tour, uh, supporting Drake White and some other musicians. Absolutely. It's kind of been a balancing act of some headlining dates and then opening for Drake, Drake White. Uh, this weekend I'll be out in Ohio again with him for Friday and Saturday. Um, and I think, think one show's already sold out. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I mean, I hit the ground running as soon as January 6th hit, and it's been go, go, go on the road ever since. So um, I feel really, really honored and blessed. And, you know, we it's been an array of shows. Some are solo acoustic because that's totally a vibe, and then some are full band, and then some I'm opening for people, some I'm on a festival bill. That's just, you never know where you're going to get. <laughs> but, um, you know, right after the show, I got my Opry debut at the mm -hmm. Ryman. January 6th and that's kind of where it all just started but a lot of the shows that I had canceled because of the that well they had to be rescheduled because I was on the show the TV show mm -hmm. so a lot of those shows were happening in January February to take care of the reschedule and um yeah I think my first full band thing was starting off like in Georgia and that was in mm -hmm. late February and we just literally, I had, I don't think I've been home for a weekend yet. So it's, it's good. That's what I love mm -hmm. and great things are happening. So, um, I, I'm really, really excited about, there's a two week run that I'm headlining in the new England area from like New York city up to Maine, but we got New Hampshire and, mm -hmm. um, it's just, if there's amount of pressure, like I feel honored, but I'm like super scared about tickets, but, and selling enough tickets and, all of that, but I know that's when the real true change happens when you can mm -hmm. start really showing. So I'm, I feel really blessed that all the people that are coming out and the venues that are believing in me, and <laughs> I'm just like, I just hope it goes well. Uh, Cause that's my biggest worry is always like, are they going to come? So, um, but yeah, great things are happening. Well, it's sold out this week, uh, Friday, the Dusty Armadillo, which is a really cool place up there that I've heard so many cool things about, too, as well. And then you're going to be, I believe it's uh, Franklin uh, coming up here on uh, Saturday of this week, which is JD Legends. And for more of this, again, guys, check out MorganMilesLive.com uh, for ticket sales and keep buying those tickets and, and just go see one hell of a performer out there, no doubt about it. You're going to get your money's worth uh, when you do this, and uh, someday she's going to be headlining her own tour and putting out her name in the marquee of, of the Grand Ole Opry and, and more great award shows. Tell me about that, because I actually went to the Opry, Kirsty and I did, or at least for me, the first time. I had gone at CRS this year, and I knew you, you mentioned coming off the show and then getting your debut at the Ryman while the other one was under construction. How did that feel, again, to step in? I know the center circle, and I've had so many people come on with me and tell me about the first time to do that. You know, the legends kind of paving the way to, you know, for us to be in this spot, and we're standing where – I mean, Hall of Famers and, and, and the legends have stood to, to play songs at, at the Grand Ole Opry for you. And I saw the, the footage and the photos, I, I can only imagine, had to be a surreal moment. Yeah, I was so, I think it's a God thing because to have both, you know, your Opry debut in the original Opry place at the Ryman, it's the mm -hmm. mother church. For me, it's so spiritual and you can feel just the history and the pain, the blood, sweat, and tears in those pews, you know, and it just took me over. And so many people from so many facets of my life flew in and to having a standing ovation to, you know, your songs, like, you know, at the Ryman, you're just like, I honestly, it still doesn't feel like it really truly happened. I was like, it took me <laughs> 17 years in Nashville alone mm -hmm. to get this opportunity and I sang one of my songs called Woman of My Word. I sang Sanctuary. But, you know, Woman of My Word just was like such a moment of I wrote that song when I was just I thought God doesn't want me doing this anymore. Like that I'm breaking. I'm a shell out of myself. And I wrote this song in Master Shoals. And 
in to sing it with that much diction and that much uh strength now was a true testament of life and the journey and um you know it hasn't been easy i wasn't just given it and that mm -hmm. i had so many people in it's just crying <laughs> and i think it's because i stand for just keep going and believing in yourself and it's hard to do that i mean it's it's if anybody's going to sit there and you know say it's easy to believe in yourself all the time I'm like man give me what you're having because like <laughs> it is hard mm -hmm. um because i'm a vulnerable emotional person and so mm -hmm. it was it was just truly rewarding i had a really great um conversation with vince gill he was the you know the, the headliner that day of and he was like morgan he went out on stage and said morgan is reminding me right now who has been a part of the opry for 30 years why it's so important you all are here for her and um this just truly warms my heart and then at the end he he saw me kind of dancing on the side of the stage and he pulled me out and we danced and the curtains closed and wow. you know he didn't have to do that it's moments like that that you go you know what I do belong here and there's been so many times that I feel like, okay, does is country music just do they not want me? Does Nashville not want me? And and all those kind of things that night I felt very um loved by my city that I put a lot of hard work into. And mm -hmm. you know, when it comes down to it, the people that get me through are, are the people that believe in me and the fans and and that's why I do what I do, you know. But the business gets in the way quite often. <laughs> if I could just take that out, I mm -hmm. would be okay. But I got to just keep focusing on why I love what I do and let mm -hmm. that that noise go away. Because I know I'm finally almost to that place where every piece of my team, I have handpicked <clears throat> with people. And that has been my problem. That has been so hard. And I... The power that I have learned in these years, and I cannot believe I've been able to just say no to a lot of things, even during the show. I know I've been looking like I've been going like this, and I have mm -hmm. been, but yeah. I have said no to a lot of things, to a lot of people, and people gossip and say, oh, I'm working with her, and I know, and you're just like, God, you guys just never stop, do you? Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. don't. Like, leave me alone and just let me find my people and the mm -hmm. people that I trust. And that is by far been the hardest thing. Cause you get one bad egg in your team, the whole ship sinks. <laughs> well said, uh, no doubt about it. Learn from experience. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that from my end of it too. Uh, TED talk. I need like a full, yeah. <laughs> a full <laughs> on TED talk and so that I can be like, okay, part one, part two, part three. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm all ears. Like, I'm here to listen to you. Novel. Your novel. <laughs> You call me anytime. I'm here to listen to everything. So if you need to vent, you know you got a friend in me, kind of like Toy Story. You call me anytime. And <laughs> That's the well, thing, but it's like we have so many great people everywhere. But it's just some there's just you run into a slime ball every now and then. And it's they make your life absolutely miserable. And it's just it's a part of it. Like that's the one thing about the I know with the voice they they keep things pretty rated G. And I was like, man, they really couldn't peel too much of the onion of like mm -hmm. what I truly went through. They just kept kind of showing me at first as like this girl living in a van. It looked like I lived in a van. I was like, stop showing that. That was during the van. I have way more things to say. I was like, okay. So that's when I started talking to the story producer. I was like, okay, we got a lot to get through <laughs> and not enough episodes. So we need to keep moving this along. Cause we never even got to the part of me being the guardian of two kids that lost their mom to ALS. Like we didn't mm -hmm. even get to even that whole thing. Mm -hmm. That was eight years of my life. So it's like, Oh, we have more. We have so <laughs> much more, so much more. They they need to run those shows. And I, I say this a lot of times too, especially how like even idle now I'm watching it and it's like really getting fast speeding up and they go like top 20 and they went top 12, top seven. I'm going, wow, they're cutting like six or seven people. I'm like, this is, you need to kind of stretch them out and make them more. That's just me. I'm, you know, for what I see and watching them and trying to, you know, scout for new talent too at the same time. But it's just more episodes need to occur over a, a span of months. And they just seem to 
cut those shows shorter and shorter. It, but. It's because uh, money. I think <laughs> money, 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 right. money. <laughs> it talks. It talks. Uh, speaking of therapy, I always love to bring this one up because uh, the people that I, I, I you know heard great feedback about it. Just the people I talked to. Uh, speaking of <laughs> the song title, just happened to be what a what a coincidence this is. Uh, silence. We're talking about people and, and things like this, but it meant so much more. Uh, talk to fans and just people in general about uh, that song on the therapy record and just what it meant to you and and, and just to include that song, which is a, a beautiful message out there. I had a hook called silence is the only way you'll listen. And that was specifically to my manager who mm -hmm. was rotten. And I, this man would sit in my writing appointments, mainly probably because he was trying to get copyright. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, now looking back 100%, but um, I felt completely backed against the wall one day and I had a writing appointment and he had said something to another employee and was like, oh, Morgan's now not going to talk to me because she's upset. And it was literally about he said that I would have um, the ability to voice like the songs that I liked out of the 70 songs that I wrote with my producer. Mm -hmm. Never got that. I got an email with five songs and it says, like, you're going to be cutting these. And I was like, totally dumbfounded. I was like, that that's so like not right. Like, that's mm -hmm. this again another statement that's a lie and i still had writing appointments with a lot of you know great writers and what am i missing like what needs to be had like that's the conversation i wanted to have so walked in the next day wrote a song in like 20 minutes <laughs> no like two hours and um yeah it made the record because it was that powerful and we actually had to keep a lot of the original demo vocal because i was just that angsty and frustrated and i i couldn't get to that level of red <laughs> in in the you know the tracking of the vocals later mm -hmm. down the, ro the road it was just like we're keeping them and that's yeah so a lot of that was just organic that day fighting for myself in a passive aggressive way through writing which was mm -hmm. happening a lot during that time period <laughs> no doubt and a lot to say during that time period too to get a lot off your chest too at the same time well this new one that came out uh march 10th across all the platforms uh i'm listening to it every day because i just feel like we all need a little bit of this particular song the one i'm referring to is uh the one you talked about is hallelujah you got to sing it there the show and and do so much with this one and you've really touched my heart in a lot of ways you've touched a lot of people with this song uh i know this one had to be quickly one of your favorites to send that message out because we all need a little bit of this type of music in us. We do. Absolutely. This song is just, again, just so powerful. It took 10 years to write. It's been my favorite song for years and years and years. And it's because it moves with you through what you're going through and it applies to so much. And the people that really, really connect to this song have really been through something. And, um, you know, I hope I deliver it with that genuine often authenticity of I've been through it and like there's this level of despair, but it's wrapped in hope. And when you deliver it with that, with both sides of that, that's when people I feel like really connect because that's how I feel. It's like even though we go through these really, really challenging times and we test our faith and we ask God, why do these things happen? Somehow we find that light. And that is the hallelujah. That is a true hallelujah of how to find a way to heal your broken heart in a way mm -hmm. that can move on. And, you know, the my biggest qualm about, oh, my God, I'm so excited that they get I was able to sing hallelujah for the show. Well, I didn't realize it was going to have to be 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hallelujah for me is like. Five minutes, Five minutes. <laughs> go on and on. It's such a moment. And I was like, how am I going to make this arrangement have the depth? Because mm -hmm. it should start vulnerable and then it should get powerful. But I had to do that so quickly in two verses. And I was like, oh, oh boy, <laughs> I do not. And I mean, we were locked into it. So it was like, because now looking back, maybe I should have saved it for a different moment. Mm -hmm. But 
it's got 13 million views on it now and i think it's because it was the premiere of the show and and mm -hmm. uh it had so much love from so many outlets and, and it connected with people. So it did what it needed to do. But now you can go and stream it on Spotify and all these other outlets and hear a very much longer version. And my video was shot at the Ryman Auditorium and it was a dream come true. Well, you definitely put music out there for a cause and have definitely touched people in so many ways, uh, very positive ways and just can get them what they're going through. I always tell people, you know, again, ch check her out live, morganmileslive.com for tickets, Ohio this weekend. And uh, she is one of my best friends. I got to see her take that ride. was so proud of her uh, for taking the ride on The Voice and uh, just a great coach and uh, one of the most genuine people I've ever met. And it was so nice to meet you there in Houston, you know, a couple a couple of years ago, we got to do that and, and uh, promote that show. And I uh, can't wait to to see you there again, too. Hey, we got to take one final time out. I'm going to come back, do a couple of questions with Rapid Fire, have a little fun with you, and uh, definitely uh, just enjoy, always enjoy the show here. Presented by our friends at uh, Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, out there, too, as well. Uh, the Presado Process, Gentle Ben of Spirits, and, of course, our friends at Honky Tonk Texas. Last segment coming up with uh, Morgan Miles. Go stream Hallelujah out there on Spotify and wherever else you uh, download or pick up your music out there. Quick time out coming back. Last segment with Morgan, it is the Backstage Pass. Hang tight. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... glass of that last night it was really good it was the bourbon side of things mixed it with a little uh kind of a little different a little coke and some other little drinks there I like making little cocktails now so if you like bourbon and of course vodka and uh, gin check them out at gentlebin.com also too if you're going to the baseball game i gotta get over to see the astros play at some point this year too you know i love sports you know that so i've got to do the ballpark and now they put the gentle bin bar inside minute Maid park so i'm gonna actually stand out there and a drink while watching baseball. Two things that really go together, and as well as music, which is good out there. Uh, back here with Morgan Miles on the backstage pass. Also, thanks to Banktail Whiskey and our friends at uh, Honky Tonk Texas for keeping us going here on the backstage pass. Morgan's right. Without the support, a good team around, you can't do uh, these type of things on a daily basis here, too. All right, have a little fun. Uh, as busy as the schedule was in, in L.A., was there a, a kind of a, a cuisine or a food you got to try that you'd never had before? No, we had to Uber Eats everything. <laughs> Catering was a disaster. I was eating um I was eating that Panera squash soup all the time. I, mm. I was trying to figure out how to make dinner in a hot pot. <laughs> so we had a mini <laughs> fridge and a microwave for like almost like a year. Like no, no. There was nothing. No. Eats. <laughs> well, I well, I didn't know if there's any downtime to actually go out, but apparently there was not time to go to a restaurant. We allowed because of COVID. We of were COVID? locked yeah. in. Oh yeah, we could get wow. a limit the show. It was intense. Yeah. That's uh, that's I did not know that during that time too. Is when you guys had had uh, had been locked up too at the time when you guys had shot the uh, the footage and things like that. All right, uh, is there any kind of uh, new dish you've come across or something you like to cook during your downtime when you get personal time? Yes. <laughs> um, I am a protein bowl girl. I just mm -hmm. really loved, I really love like 
just really since I think because I'm on the road, I just crave like fresh vegetables, like grilled chicken with like mm -hmm. jazz rice and just all these <laughs> fresh things. I make a joke that it's like it only takes five ingredients. You only need five ingredients. <laughs> if the five ingredients aren't good, then you didn't get the right <laughs> ingredients. Mm -hmm. But I love cooking. It's a passion because it takes your mind off things and it's also creative. And then it it makes people happy and it brings people together. So I love cooking. I cook with my mom a lot. My dad's a good griller. So I love that. And then, well, tell your parents I said hello too, because it was a pleasure to to meet oh, them yeah, both you here. Got, you even got to meet Teddy. I did meet Teddy. I did, which was, was a lot of fun. I can't wait. If you ever get back through here, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be out there somewhere down here in the Houston area, or someday if your name's on that marquee at the rodeo, she's playing the Houston rodeo and one of the big shows down here at NRG. Then I'm definitely gonna uh, be there too as well, no doubt. Anytime you get near Texas, I'm coming out there. You know that too as well. <laughs> All right, uh, downtime, I guess. Hobbies. You mentioned cooking too as well. Any other fun stuff you've gotten to do lately? I know the road's been busy and things like that, but. Uh, People say they have different hobbies, maybe some hidden talents or something like that. Well, it's not quite the season yet, but I, I do go water skiing okay. at home. We live on a lake and um, I water ski with my parents. It's just been a thing that we've always done. Um, and honestly, I just like walking my dog and working <laughs> out of Orange Theory. I'm pretty lame in like a lot of ways. I just think I like just like relaxing and getting back to that frame of mind of like, okay, now I got to go do this, 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 mm -hmm. this, this, and have energy. I, it's like, I need to get, <laughs> get energy back, you know, because I think it's like the, the shows are going to wear you out. Cause I just, you just give everything that you want to mm -hmm. give. And then the, traveling is tough. I mean, traveling wears anybody out on a good day. So mm -hmm. the fact that you're traveling and then playing that night and traveling and then, <laughs> I mean, you get ran down. So mm -hmm. I appreciate living on a lake and it's quiet and <laughs> it's I, so no, boring. Because during some weekends, I want to get up to my buddy's house and he's got like a little pond in his backyard and you just walk out his front door and you're fishing, throwing a rod and reel in the... Yeah. In the lake, you gotta have that kind of time. You do. I love anything with water. So like this <laughs> water, water, water. It's 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 so relaxing. Immediately when I landed yesterday off of terrible Spirit Airlines, terrible. I I got home and I got in the Gator and put my dog in my lap. We went to the park and we walked mm -hmm. and I was just like, okay, I feel better now. <laughs> better now. That's that's what you you got to do that too. And I'll tell you what I recently started too was. Uh, didn't realize how important it was for the mind, but my God, meditation. I take like 20, 30 minutes a day just to meditate. It works real well. It really does. I just don't know where I can find alone time. Like, I feel like I'm always never, there's no space. Like my alone time on the road now is Orange Theory. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like, and it's really not alone time, but you're right. Like, I maybe I, in my bunk, I can just put headphones in and like try mm -hmm go to that and just take that time out because I here I get on my porch in the morning and sit out in the sun with my dog and I do gratitude exercises and I can feel that I'm not doing them and it's so important to journal and you know just keep your mind right from the get-go of the day and when you don't take that time it really affects the rest of your day your life your perspective and I know like even like Sundays I'm usually traveling home and I'm missing church like you know, there's just a lot of things that I need. I know I need to find some balance mm -hmm. because those things are very, very important to me. And, uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, uh, from one super fan here to many others out there, uh, just congratulations on all the hard work. I know yeah. we've had, we've had conversations on the side before it's going to, uh, pay off, keeping your mind right, staying fresh, uh, trying to keep as, as healthy as possible there too, as well and find time to do things you love to do. I enjoyed the ride on the show and I look forward to uh, many more really cool things uh, to, to come in your career. You've done so much. And um, I love this song. Hallelujah. Make sure you guys go check it out on Spotify and stream across all those digital platforms and get the tickets uh, shows sold out uh, this weekend, Ohio on Friday, but there's many more out there at morganmileslive.com. Uh, you get back near Texas, give me a holler. Cause you know, I'm going to be out there always standing behind you. 110% always appreciate you making time for me and uh, keep us in the loop. And, and like I said, may God bless you going forward.
Awesome. There's definitely some Texas states already mm -hmm. confirmed, but we haven't announced them yet. So I will definitely let them let you all know. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely put those out there on our stuff too. And like I said, you come near here, we're going out there to do the, what we do best, the live show coverage out there too. We're not done yet. A great pop artist from Canada coming up here in a little bit tomorrow. Uh, Craig Wayne Boyd. Uh, he was on the voice years back. Looking forward to talking to him too as He's well. And, buddy. That's Tell your buddy. Oh, well, I, I, I love the music and <laughs> we finally tracked him down to get here on the uh, backstage pass. And Friday, uh, she was just on American Idol top 22 as well. Uh, tremendous pop artist. If you hadn't heard of her, Olivia Solie. My goodness, she is uh, super talented. She'll be with us there. And then over the next few weeks, some more great shows here. Morgan, thanks so much for being with us. We'll talk to you guys uh, later in just a few minutes. I forgot I was doing the Texas two-step today for a couple of shows here on the Backstage Pass, powered by the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. Uh, we'll see you guys back here in just a bit.